It's really, truly an honor to be a part of these 24 hours of reality. And right now, I got to tell you, this is going to be the nicest 20 minutes uh, I've had in months and months and months. I'm happy to be, uh, bring out this young man uh, who's going to talk about, well, he's an actor. He's an advocate uh, for one environment, one-to-one -one conversation. Let's have it with uh, Mark Ruffalo. And, and, and by the way, everybody knows, it's nice to Thank see you. you. Thanks. So everybody knows you your acting resume. I mean, the face is familiar to every generation, everybody. Um, I, I, I can't keep thinking about the Avengers now every time I'm looking at you at this point. <laughs> but, <laughs> but the reason that we're here to talk a little bit is, but, you know, you're a husband, you're a father. If I'm right, it's three kids. Are we up to three, three. now? Yeah, up to three. Um, so, when we talk about changes that are coming on in our planet and our climate, what are you working at at home? How do you deal with this with them and in your life? Uh, well, we just instituted the, uh, uh, the Meatless Mondays uh, at my house um, uh, officially. Uh, pretty good because we actually probably do more uh, than one day a week of, uh, of, of vegetarian um, cuisine. but. Uh, but um, that, that has been officially uh, instated, um, part of that campaign, the Meatless Monday campaign. Um, we uh, take the subway to school, um, we ride bikes, um, we use LEDs, um, we compost, um, you know, pretty much uh, any way that we, we move to solar energy in our ho home upstate. Um, we're on our way to geothermal for our heating and cooling. Um, you know, we're sort of doing it in bites as we can afford to do it. This is, a, I mean, for you and when I hear about your life, it, it sounds like kind of a, a complete tackling and absorption of the issues and the problems. But let's, let's go back just a little bit because let's say, you know, you're that young guy and you're going to Hollywood and you're getting involved in your acting career. You got a lot on your plate. You got a lot of projects to, to talk about. Got a lot of interviews to go on. Um, how do you start to think about the environment? When does it start to happen for you that you start thinking about climate in life? Um, well, I grew up on the Great Lakes that were, um, were, were terribly polluted when I was a boy. And, and I, I, I would see fish that were deformed, had tumors and um, all kinds of um, medical waste uh, on the shores and, and, and pollution and, and um, garbage. Uh, I grew up under a coal fire power plant, so uh, I, I was there when, when that came online and I, I, I saw the soot that was collecting on the trees that were, was never there. And, How old were you then, Mark? Um, I must have been uh, from uh, six years old to, to 13 years old. That was, a, that was something that I was really aware of. And this was in the 70s when a lot of these issues were, were immediately starting to roll out. Uh, and, and had a, um, for a certain type of people, had a, had a, real, um, a real importance in their lives. And so that became my sort of education. Uh, and it was a real education. It was a, it was a direct experience of, of my world that was changing because of uh, pollution um, and our need for energy. And so um, that grew in me over all these years. Um, then uh, I studied with, uh, with an acting teacher, Stella Adler, who, who one of the made, best. One of the best, yeah. but uh, came out of a, um, a political activist uh, tradition uh, from the Yiddish theater. And so part of what I learned uh, uh, as a young actor was to really be a significant artist. You had to know what was happening politically, socially, and you had to be involved. And, um, and that you really didn't fulfill your, your, um, your full potentiality as an artist unless you were involved that way. And so as I became successful, um, and I had more time available to myself. Um, I have been getting more and more involved in the issues that I, that I believe in and, and feel are important uh, for my life, but also for the, for the life of my three kids and yeah. their friends and my community. Now, there's a lot of topics to take on when you talk about climate, you talk about what's going on with our environment now. Let's take on the topic of renewable energies and just talk about it a little bit, because it seems to be a passion of yours. Although, I got to tell you, I see you at a lot of events, I see you talking about a lot of causes, I see you very, very involved uh, in the environment and climate as a whole. But when we talk about renewable energies, um, it wasn't long ago uh, that people just didn't think they were going to catch on, that yeah. people didn't 
think we could change people's minds yeah. or change their habits. Yeah. You know, the way our parents raised us to plug things in and use it and not think about where the power came from sure. would be the way it stayed. What do you think first started to change our minds? Was it a generational change? Or what is it that now we're watching, we're witnessing this time where we are really changing? Well, I think we, we became um, very comfortable with technology. And we saw some enormous technological leaps within a very short period of time. Yeah. Um, Al was talking about the cell phone, there's a laptop. Uh, when those technologies came out, uh, I remember I, I went out and got a, a desktop computer. No one else that I knew had one, and they all laughed at me. Yeah. They're like, "This is your geek. This will never take hold." And I would, I, I even learned how to type when I was in 12th grade because I saw that technology coming and Did I believed really? in it. And I went. I was the only <laughs> boy in my typing class. Yeah. And I wasn't good, but I... <laughs> That's true, because typing wasn't something prior no. to uh, the electronic age, prior to the computer age, mm -hmm. that that Men. we would think would be important because no. why would you type it when you could write it? it, it that's such an important thing to remember that when, you ch when technology changes your life, it changes everything. Everything, and we, we've seen that change. We've witnessed it. And, and so we went from a world that had an enormous limitations, and we were told about these limitations all the time, and we saw those limitations blown past. And so now I have a cell phone. Mm -hmm. I mean, this cell phone in my pocket used to, not 20 years ago, you had a whole warehouse it took to house the same amount of power, the same amount of computing power. Yeah. And it cost $3 million. Today I got one in my pocket for 99 bucks. <laughs> okay, and that's a miracle. I mean, yeah. like that's that's the world we're living in. And so, so the, this this sort of defeatism, or or this 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 um, uh, what we call the laggards, the people who who don't want to accept that this change is here and it's happening, um, are 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 being left behind, and the most of the society believes that it can happen now. It's, it's not, they believe in technology. They, they've seen technology working in their lives every single day. And so to have a huge technological shift that breaks from tradition to them is not something that is new or particularly interesting to right. them. It, it's something that they're very willing to accept. And, and, and that's why we're seeing this explosion of clean energy. Also, what we've seen, just like my cell phone that used to cost, you know, thirty million dollars, <laughs> and was about that big. Yes, yeah. has come down in price, and that's what we're seeing happening with this technology. And we're five years away from solar being a grid parity in every state in the United States. Right now, it's all about fourteen states in the United States. Solar is at grid parity. When that happens, sadly, in our country. Ec economics is probably the, the main driver of many of our decisions, even if it's stupid. Um, no, it's true. S sadly, that's, th that's the truth. But today, we come to a point where these technologies will be cheaper than fossil fuels. And if you backed out the $600 billion a year that we spend in subsidies on fossil fuels, it's already cheaper. <laughs> All right, so let's take it back now, because you've kind of like run even ahead. So let's say that I'm sitting at home, and I, I could be anywhere in the world, because this is on 24 hours now. Anyone can log on and watch this. But my community hasn't really embraced it yet. What are the first things that as a, as a young person or as, with a, a young growing family, what are some of the first things that I can do? Well, I mean, there's amazing things now. Like, I was talking to my, uh, uh, someone today about, about solar energy. He said, I can't afford solar energy. I said, wait a second. You, you don't have to pay anything for solar energy. You could lease solar energy, and they'll take the payment for the solar energy out of the savings that, you, that they create every month. Up to 60% of your energy bill will drop to 60%. So, so there are ways to plug into this immediately. If you want solar today and you got fairly decent credit, call Sungevity, call Solar City, and have them site your house for solar. They'll send somebody out, and in, in, in three months' time, you'll have solar. Your energy bills will be from 20 to 40% less than what you're paying for now. They'll lock into that price. Someone else will take care of the solar panels. Someone else will take care of the inverter. And you've made a 
a switch. You've, and then you've taken 350,000 pounds of carbon out of the atmosphere. And anyone could do that today. And that's good news, man. That's great news. And that's true, and that's happening. All right, now there are some communities in some areas where they're gonna say, hey, but I'm gonna get penalized. My power company's gonna charge me. I read this someplace. They're gonna charge me if I'm putting solar up. Is, are we working in that direction to undo some of that as well? Listen, when you have 11 states in our country, there's 11 states in our country that get the highest fraction of their energy from wind power, okay? Those states had a 0.4% reduction in their energy costs. Every other state in the United States, this is from 2008 to 2013, every other state in the United States has had an 8% energy increase, 8%. Yeah. Those, you don't hear about prices going down too those much. Those trends aren't going away, man. But as soon as people see that there's a better cell phone, yeah. that it's cheaper, it's stronger, it's better, they're going to move to that. And that's what's going to drive this change. And so you see countries like Germany, the, the great gift that Germany has given to the world is that they invested their money in solar energy and wind energy. And because of that, the cost of solar and wind has finally become accessible for the rest of the world. And that's a gift to the world. And all these philanthropists that um, have billions of dollars to spend, the best thing you could do is divest from your fossil fuels and invest in renewable energy and do that today. And we'll see these prices come down even faster than that. And once the prices are down, it's a revolution. The thing will tip. You make a good point. You bring up Germany. The New York Times did uh, an article, I think it was on the 13th. Yesterday. Uh, yeah, and they, they, they put this article out. They talk about uh, Germany trying to get to 30% or a little bit more of uh, all their fuel, uh, all their, their power on renewables, and that the people have a desire for it. That when the politicians were like, wait, let's slow it down, the people took to the streets and said, hey, we, we, we don't want you to slow it down, we want you to speed it up. So if we use that as a case study and you move to America, a lot of people are going to say, you know what, America's a lot larger, Mark. You know, sure. we, we, we've got a lot more people, we've got a lot more places to power. Mm -hmm. um, are we going to be able to move? And we've got an old system. We've got an antiquated power grid. I mean, there's going to be a lot of money that has to be spent to update that grid, to, to do all of this. Are we a country, are we a nation that can do that? Are we a nation that has the ability to do it? But we do amazing things. We're, this is America. We, we, we're, we're innovators. We're, we're, we, we, we pr we're problem solvers. We're incredibly um, innovative. We, we, we drive change in the world. They adopt our technology. <laughs> so this is 100% American. It's 100% doable. Um, I started, I'm one of the co-founders of the Solution Project, solutionsproject.org, and what we're doing now is we are showing Americans the individuals who are actually making these changes today. They're taking control and owning their energy resources. Where do I see the stories? Go to www.solutionsproject.org or 100%.org. This is happening, and we are gonna show people my whole mission with the Solutions Project is to bring the good news to people. And America, this is great, this is American, man. We can own our own power, store our own power, and sell our own power as we see fit. Whoever, whoever um, is in charge of your power or your energy is in charge of your destiny. I'm talking about taking us away from foreign conflagrations, okay? Why are we sending trillions of dollars overseas to protect our energy interests there? And Americans know this. They're not stupid. They get what we're doing over there. This doesn't have anything to do with, 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 our, with our national security other than what it means to us on the energy level. So imagine Certainly, the abundance. I think that many people would agree that it's energy first and, and security may, may uh, come at a, at a different level. But okay, but let's go back. You, your film career, um, potent and powerful, you know a lot about movies. I wanna ask you about a movie that came out, and I can't even believe it. I think it was 2006, I think it's that long ago, An Inconvenient Truth. Did you, what did the movie mean to you when you saw it? Body, it was, well, I was ahead of a lot of people because I, I study this, I, you know, this is important to me. Um, and I was seeing changes already happening uh, before that. Uh, um, and so 
It was terribly frustrating. It was yeah. uh, alarming, but it was also, I thought, a positive thing. You know, the truth hurts sometimes, but that's how you face reality. Did you find it making it easier to have the conversation because there was something to point to that people could, could tangibly say, I saw this or I watched this or there is something that they could visually place to the whole topic? Yes, yeah, so it was a wonderful tool for organizing. And, uh, you know, we're here today because of it. Um, I'm so happy to see this uh, establishment and, and, and brother VP Al Gore <laughs> uh, take a, a, a tact of hope because there's a lot of abundance available to us on the other side of this, this rainbow. There are a lot of, I mean, you know, in my business, in my world, we do a lot of, a lot of down stories, a lot of, and, and I think we've spent a lot of time, you know, telling people, hey, it's not fixable, it's out of control, look yeah. at these numbers, there's mm -hmm. no hope for you. The interesting thing about this 24-hour cycle is that we are talking about hope, and we're talking about things that you can do. So, I'm actually gonna ask you the question, do we have everything that we need in front of us and around us to solve the mounting issues that are, that are uh, around us? Not only do we have them, but they're also getting better and better each day. Give me now, one or two examples of what we... Okay, so let's say that the United States, this is from Stanford, Cornell, and, and the real life uh, examples that we've found with solutions, okay? So let's say we decided to go to 100% renewable, which okay. we could do, by the way, and we could do it by... Sounds like a pretty big goal. By 2040. We could literally do this by, by 2050 based on... So let's say we could do it over the next 40 years. Okay. So they asked that question, can we do it? Not only could we do it, it would save us 60,000 lives a year that are lost to fossil fuel pollution. It will create 5.3 million construction jobs, 3.2 million um, operational jobs, uh, 2.6 million operational jobs. We will lose 3.5 million nuclear and fossil fuel jobs, but that will leave us with a net gain of 4.5 million jobs. Now, um, the 11 states that we see, it'll, it'll, the 11 states that have uh, renewable energy. They're pretty solid programs. Stabilized prices. We'll save 3.3% of our GDP by moving to this type of uh, economy because we'll be cutting out insurance claims, workers' comp claims, um, uh, uh, hospitalization, uh, sick days and also um, emergency room visits. Those are the, those are the health care concerns from cutting out fossil fuels. There, this is based on the technology that's available to us today, but the technology that's available to five years from now yeah. is going to be even more, uh, more efficient and cheaper. Yeah. And so. Well, it's crazy to look at the solar panels, the first ones that were rolled out, how heavy they were, how difficult it was to keep them working, how uh, difficult it was to plug it into something to gather it. I mean, and, and so when you see that old technology and you see something that is flexible uh, right now and can actually be wrapped around a structure and collect, yes. I don't know what the percentage more energy is, but it's substantial. It's substantial. So that's just a big change in what we've seen since we rolled out the technology. Let, let me tell you about what we, so, so we've been working with Lilani Munter. She's a race car driver, right? She's a renewable energy and advocate. You're, aren't you doing this 50 states thing? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So, so we, well, the Solutions Project used um, the, the, the study uh, that Stanford did with Cornell and UC Davis. And um, we came up with 50 plans for 50 states to take those states to 100% renewable energy. You could go on our website, you could see it, you could see what it'll save each state in healthcare costs. New York State, it'll save us $30.6 million, a, a billion dollars a year 3.6 billion dollars a year in healthcare costs. It'll create thousands of jobs, millions of jobs. So, um, so, Milani Munter is a race car driver. She's, we're not asking her to give up her race car driving, but she drives her electric vehicle to her races, and she'll drive cross country to these races in her electric vehicle to show that this is actually happening today. She doesn't have a problem doing that. She doesn't run out of energy she does she drives her electric vehicle like everyone drives their gasoline car um, 
this is, uh, it, it, it's here. But we just don't know it's here. I, this time flew, and I knew it would, I knew it would. I needed 40 minutes to talk to you. Quickly, because we've only got like 25 seconds sure. left of the interview time. Sure. If you want to inspire a young person, yeah. do that for me. I would say, listen, this is your world. We live in a time where nothing you can imagine can't be created. And this is a time when you guys get to look at us people, <laughs> look at all the problems that we are handing you, and to actually take control of your lives. And I want to say that um, something that I found out is when I'm losing hope, it's because I'm not doing enough. And if you find yourself losing hope in any way, then get out and do something. Because you are the change that you're waiting for. And nobody else is going to do it. Not your moms, your dads, not your senator, not, 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 not your president, nobody. You are going to do it. And you live in a world where you can do it. And there's a lot of joy there. There's a lot of community. You'll meet a lot of pretty girls and interesting boys. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you can use all your technology. It plugs in really well with all your high tech. So. <laughs> you hit them all right there. Yeah. Mark, thank you yeah. for truly for sure. an enjoyable nice uh, moment in time.